Hello and welcome to this quick video all about Zadig. So this quick tip is really prompted by a friend of mine, Mark, who's just getting into building quadcopters and things with his dad, and he was uh, struggling to figure out how to get all the driver stuff to work. And we had a conversation on the phone, and it was obvious that it was one of those things that wasn't making any sense to him at all. And I have a lot of quadcopter building for beginners series, check those out on the channel, that kind of talk about this. But if you're trying to figure this out and you need to find the answer and you're Googling, you're probably not going to find those videos and find this particular answer. Now, this is all about a piece of technology called Zadig. Now, it's one of those parts of the hobby, along with the BL Heli Suite and either Betaflight or the iNav Flight Configurator, that you're going to come across and end up using an awful lot. And when you need it, it's going to be worth its weight in gold. Now, Zadig's job is a little bit wacky. And if you're not used to how all this stuff works, then it's really confusing. But hopefully after watching this video, it'll all make sense. You'll be able to use it and be able to flash your modern flight controllers with Beats Flight or iNav Flight or whatever without getting into too much trouble. Now, for all of you that have been building quadcopters for ages, this is not going to tell you anything new. This is, again, just really for those who are coming into the hobby, who are struggling to flash their flight controllers, have heard about Zadig, but not exactly sure what it does or how it works. So let's get on with that bit now. So before we start talking about Zadig, let's just talk about what happens normally. Now there's a USB port on the side of the modern flight controller. You plug your USB cable into that. You plug the other end into your computer. And if you've already installed Betaflight, iNav Flight or something similar, it's usually installed the drivers along with that. The drivers will be auto configured. A COM port will appear in Betaflight that you can select. You click on connect and away you go. You can start setting everything up and everything is hunky dory. And that is using usually a CP210X USB driver. Once you've got that installed on the machine, you'll find that that's the one that's naturally selected and installed and it's all done automatically. In fact, you'll notice the links to all of the things that we're talking about here on the front page of things like Betaflight. So if you are struggling and you haven't got that driver on your computer, then you can download and install it. And then hopefully next time you plug in the flight controller using the USB cable, it'll all be tickety boo. But what you've probably noticed is that on modern flight controllers, when you go to flash or update the firmware, once the flight controller reboots, you can't connect to it. And that is where Zadig comes in. Now, what's actually happening here is when the flight controller reboots, it's in something called bootloader mode. And bootloader, I'm not going to go into it here. I'll put a link in the description what explains what a bootloader is. But when a flight controller is in bootloader mode, it's not going to talk in the same way. It'll appear on the computer as something like an STM32 bootloader. And that, unfortunately, doesn't have any associated USB drivers on your PC. So that's why Betaflight can't flash it. So Zadig is what you need to put a driver on the computer and connect it to that STM32 bootloader that you've got waiting to talk to the computer and it will do a little bit of magic. So what it's going to do, it'll actually install a Win USB driver that's connected to the flight controller while it's in bootloader mode and then the computer can talk to that driver and then do the flashing. So that's all Zadig is really doing. It's just putting in an extra little piece. So when the flight controller is in bootloader mode, you can talk to it and send it information. So to use Zadig, it's pretty straightforward. I'll put a link in the description to download it. But again, all the information that you need to get these pieces is in the main screen of things like Betaflight. Download it, install it onto your PC. Then in Betaflight or iNav or whatever, try and flash your flight controller. If it won't connect, that's fine. Just leave it like that. You'll find that the lights on the flight controller are usually different. It lights up in a different way, if at all, when in bootloader mode. Some flight controllers don't light up at all when it's trying to talk to the computer while in the STM32 bootloader. Leave it like that because that's exactly how we want it. If you can't get it to work like that, lots of flight controllers have two little pads that you short or a little button that you press to put it into bootloader mode. So what you do is you short those pads or press that button, then plug the USB cable into it and then the computer while holding that button or shorting those pads. And then as the flight controller powers up and initializes, rather than load the flight control software, it'll just sit in bootloader. So you need the flight controller to be in bootloader mode through one of those two ways. 
Once that's done, open Zadig and then go into the options list and select list all devices. Now, what you're going to do is scroll down all the devices on your computer and you're looking for one that's called STM32 bootloader. And that's exactly what it's going to be called in that list. When you find that, select it. If you can't find it, it probably means that the flight controller you're using hasn't actually come up in STM32 bootloader mode. So have another go, just like we've done above. And with the STM32 bootloader selected, leave everything else as default and click on the bit at the bottom, the big button that says install driver. And after a few seconds of chugging away, it'll say success. Once it's done that, then close Zadig and have another go at making it all work and being able to flash your flight controller. So what's actually happened here is Zadig has put an extra device driver in place for when the flight controller comes up in that bootloader mode. So when it's working normally, uh, connected by USB and you're configuring your on-screen display or your flight modes or whatever it is, you're going to be talking over that CP2010X USB driver that's used all the time. And then for those handful of times where you're going to flash it and it reboots into bootloader mode, then the driver that Zadix just put in for you is the one you're going to be using to talk to the board to send it the file so that you can update the software that's actually on the thing. Word of caution, do be very careful with Zadig. If you replace a driver for something else, then you're going to have to undo drivers, go into device manager, it gets a bit painful. Always triple check before you click on install driver that you have the STM32 bootloader device selected and that way you should stay out of trouble. But hopefully that helps all of you who are pretty new into the hobby, who are struggling to flash your flight controller. Again, go and have a look at all of my videos on the quadcopter building for beginners. It explains a lot of this, but this is just one of the many steps you need to go through to get to the other end and have your quadcopter flying well. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.